My name is Noel Leader. I am works manager of the Illawarra Coke Company at Colcliffe. I am also a keen amateur movie maker and have made this film to show the important part played by Illawarra Coke in the development of Australian secondary industry and also in export markets in Southeast Asia. The Pacific coast of the Illawarra district of New South Wales, 35 miles south of Sydney and 20 miles north of Port Kembla, one of Australia's two big steel centres and the heart of a major region of industrial development. This is Coalcliffe. Rugged sandstone cliffs frame the site where the Australian coal mining industry was born. At this point in 1797, a party of seamen found coal lying near high water mark. The men were walking north to Sydney following the wreck of their ship in Bass Strait, the turbulent waterway between Victoria and Tasmania. Eighty years later, a tunnel was driven into the Bulleye Seam at this point in the cliffs, a pioneering venture which was followed by the building of a jetty into the open sea. Here, coal ships were loaded direct from the mine tunnel for Sydney and other markets. Now, a century later, a modern scenic road winds round the foot of the hills above the remains of the old jetty and trains ply to and from Coalcliffe through a tunnel under the mountain. The early development at the foot of the cliff has grown into the nationally important enterprise of Kembla Coal and Coke Proprietary Limited, proprietors of the Coalcliffe Colliery and the Illawarra Coke Works. A fully mechanised mine has been developed at a cost of more than five million pounds to produce large quantities of coking coal. The Illawarra Coke Works uses this coal in the production of high quality metallurgical coke for Australian industries and for export overseas. Coal from the mine, which produces over 3,000 tonnes a day, is washed in a 400 tonnes an hour preparation plant and then transferred into product bins for delivery. Coal going to the Coke Works is moved by conveyor at 250 tonnes an hour into the Coke Works raw coal bins. A 50,000 tonne coal stockpile is kept to ensure uninterrupted supplies of coal for coking and export overseas. This high capacity tractor shovel has a six tonne bite. Motor lorries transport coal from stockpile to a hopper feeding the coal conveyor to the works raw coal bins. These vibro feeders transfer the coal to a flight conveyor. Oil is added to assist coal handling and improve its bulk density for better coking. A bucket elevator feeds the coal to grinders of 140 tonnes an hour capacity. Careful preparation is vital at this stage to provide the proper size and distribution of the petrographic constituents of coal used for coking. Movement of coal from the colliery bins to the oven charging bins is automatically controlled. Accuracy in loading the coal charge to the ovens is achieved by electronic weighing using recently developed load cells specially designed in Holland for this application, the first of its kind in the world. This equipment automatically stops the flow of coal when correct weight has been obtained. Two charge cars, each carrying 15 tonnes, 
transport coal to the oven to be charged. The Illawarra Coke Company is Australia's largest producer of high quality metallurgical coke, made in this battery of big compound underfluid coke ovens. These most efficient ovens were designed by Illawarra's own technical personnel and constructed under their direct supervision. Modern coke oven construction overseas has recently adopted the basic principles embodied many years earlier in the Illawarra design. Red heat retained in the oven from the previous charge ignites the coal, which is levelled mechanically. The oven door is then sealed with a special clay mixture to prevent the entry of air. All stages of the coking cycle are carefully supervised, beginning with a visual check of the oven immediately after charging. Works foreman John Burnett has been making coke for 40 years. The coking cycle goes on 24 hours a day until completed and a further temperature check determines when the oven is ready for discharge. It's hot in there, 1200 degrees centigrade. After coking is completed, doors at the front and back of the oven are lifted mechanically to allow the discharge of the coke. The coke ram is positioned for the pushing of the oven. The ram pushes the red-hot coke through the oven to the coke car. Coke guides prevent spillage during passage of the coke across the hearth. Twenty-two tonnes of coke is discharged from each oven. Nothing is left to chance and careful control at all stages of manufacture ensures a consistently high quality product. The use of water during quenching is kept to a minimum. The aim being to quench the coke by forming a steam envelope rather than by the use of excessive water. This keeps final moisture content to a minimum. Coke Wharf, K 
cast steel tiles resist the extreme heat and abrasion of the newly quenched coke. Then small pockets of unquenched coke are extinguished by hand. Cooled coke is fed under gravity through quadrant gates onto a heat-resisting neoprene conveyor belt for transfer to the screening plant. Illawarra coke is screened on the largest vibrating screen in the world a resonance screen with a single horizontal screening surface 55 feet long and 6 feet wide. Before a decision was made to install this revolutionary screen, technical officers of the company carried out an intensive investigation in Australia and overseas. Thorough tests were conducted on a small prototype to establish the suitability of the resonance screening principle. These slow motion film studies were made as part of this investigation. The resonance principle involves the use of special synthetic resonance rubbers which give the screen a high degree of efficiency. Its conventional eccentric action is greatly amplified by the use of resonance rubbers. These compress on contact, store energy and then on the reverse stroke release this energy to thrust the screen basket back against rubbers at the other end of the stroke. The action is then repeated with the result that this screen is capable of operating horizontally while still beating gravity six times. A conventional screen must operate in an inclined position and can only exceed gravity by a maximum of two and a half times. The huge screen area ensures that each piece of coat is sized correctly. Great interest has been shown by engineers from all over the world in the 55 foot long screening surface. The screen was specially designed in Germany for this application and manufactured in Australia. In practice, it has been found to give high screening efficiency at a rate of 140 tonnes an hour. The big screen is located 70 feet above the rail sidings and screened coke in six sizes goes into steel storage bunkers below for dispatch by rail and road. This accurate coke separation ensures that consistency and quality are always maintained. Quality control means constantly testing the coke for chemical properties and physical strength. A sample of coke is finely ground and a representative fraction submitted to laboratory testing of its chemical composition. Another sample of the coal used to make it is submitted to a determination of swelling index as a measure of its coking quality. button produced by heating the coal sample in the crucible is measured against standard profiles on this chart 
for determination of its swelling index number. Physical tests include the determination of shatter index. A representative sample of coke is dropped onto cast steel plates and the amount of coke shattered measured through a screen. Abrasion index is obtained by tumbling a representative sample of coke for 1,000 revolutions in the abrasion test drum and then measuring how much degradation of size has taken place. Road lorries are loaded from the bunker below the screening plant using specially designed chutes to minimise breakage. Coke is dispatched by road to many parts of Australia and has achieved a firm reputation with foundry men for consistency and quality. consignment of coke leaves the Eelwara works bound for General Motors Holden's Limited. The Fisherman's Bend works of General Motors Holden's Limited, operators of one of Australia's largest and most efficient hot blast cupulas. This plant demands coke of strictly uniform quality to produce the high temperature pouring metal required for automotive casting. The coke is batch weighed for charging to the cupola. A significant feature of the plant is automatic recording of all phases of cupular operation. Hot metal is poured from the holding furnace into the casting ladle, then transferred into moulds to form cylinder blocks and cylinder heads for one of Australia's greatest success stories, the Holden car. Another hot blast cupola operated by McElwraith Industries in Sydney melts metal for a wide variety of products. Uniformly sized Illawarra coke is charged to the cupola by skip hoist and hot metal poured for a production run in the casting of bathtubs.
after preheating in the enamelling furnace, the baths are sprayed with several coats of enamelling powder and replaced in the furnace to allow the enamel to fuse to its characteristic high gloss finish. Ready for the home, the finished quality of these baths reflects the high standard of production control in their manufacture. the Broken Hill Associated Smelters plant at Port Pirie in South Australia is railed to the shipping point at Port Kembla, 20 miles from the Illawarra Coke Works. Reserve Coke supplies are maintained in a stockpile near the loading jetty. Ships carrying up to 6,000 tonnes of coke operate on a regular shuttle service on the five-day run to Port Piri, where the coke is used to smelt and refine lead and zinc from concentrates produced at Broken Hill. The Port Piri Works is the world's largest producer and exporter of lead, and only the highest quality coke can meet the rigid furnace conditions required in this operation. Coke is stored in graded heaps at the wharf side and moved by Telfer system with the concentrates to the furnace charge hopper. Molten lead tapped from the furnace enters the refinery building where zinc is removed by vacuum distillation. Caustic soda is added to remove impurities and pure metal is cast into ingots for shipment to the consumer. An important byproduct is electrolytic silver, which is raked from a solution also containing gold. In a highly mechanised operation, pure lead produced at Port Pirie is shipped to the markets of the world. Hard coking coal mined at the Coal Cliff Colliery has an established market in Southeast Asia. The quality and consistency of Illawarra coke are also being recognised and appreciated by progressive foundry operators in this area. A short haul to Port Kembla 
and Illawarra coke is on its way to foundries in other countries. A product of Australia, helping to build trade and goodwill with Australia's neighbours.